Hey, honey, wash day, Delmarie. Good morning. Good morning. Are we ready to go? We or, are ready are to on? rock and roll. We are. Okay. Hey, he and he washed it. Now, I'm fed to wash it to all the listeners this morning. Geez, what a beautiful day here in Colorado. I was just looking uh, and praying uh, out my bedroom window on the east side. and Just was really thinking about creation, I guess. And that was one of the things that I wanted to go ahead and start start off with this morning. I had intentions of talking about moral values, uh, moral integrity through our Lakota way of life, and then I thought, I better explain why we believe the way we do about creation, the creator, and other deities, and our story, I mean, through our stories. So anyway, this morning, I'm really going to talk about a little bit what I remember, um, and it's kind of funny that I had to, well, here's one of the things that I kind of had a smile about this morning. They always say there's good and bad and everything. And one of our creation stories was the Ktomi, the trickster. But anyway, <laughs> I uh, I didn't have time last night to actually uh, process my thoughts of what I was going to talk about or how it was going to go. Uh, <laughs> I fell asleep and I thought, okay, I'll just go ahead. I mean, I was tired, so I said, all right, I'll go ahead and just just pray and fall asleep and see what happens. And I didn't wake up until 4.30 this morning. And then I I thought about, okay, all right, I understand. My prayers are answered. This is the way I was, I mean, awakened real early to go ahead and process it. But through through my sleep, I think I've been given the, the answer to how my uh, story was going to go or my uh, talk show was going to go. But anyway, let's go ahead and start off with the morning prayer. And then I will try to explain as much as I know in, uh, of my interpretation of my father's stories. Ampetule Tunkashila, Li la wopila tanka, he hani wekta yunka, oblazinaha. Every day that we wake up to another day as we are reborn into a different time, changes that come in, into our lives. So, hina lila wopila tanka tunkashila, naha ampetule, dua na dona, a na hopta na kabhina tunkashila. Let us get some understanding and at least process a little of of some of our ways of Lakota uh, thought process here and to understand and then to be sensitive to to some of our ways. Now I send all my prayers to all as I started saying Tonkashila because there's so much that we need to pray about in in today's time. So Tonkashila I'm better washed in how wopila tanka all right, good morning, everybody. Um, you know, my stories and my opinions and, and interpretation through family and kinship stories is, is something that I think um, I have the, the blessings to remember these stories and to know that although our uh, grandparents and our parents really didn't have the vocabulary to go ahead and use some of these words as I listen through my mind and um, and thinking about the stories what they mean and my father probably you know had a ninth grade well actually he did have a ninth grade education so he he I mean he kind of knew so he kind of interpreted a little bit of some of the stories that he told me but we um, we used to have nights I mean and in the early 70s, I mean, we didn't have as much stuff happening in the rural areas of Montana, so we um, used to tell stories, or he would tell us stories, and and then he would say, Ablazahe, which means, um, did you understand? And and I never really, you know, at that time I was a teenager, so I really didn't really understand, you know, or I didn't really think about it, but the blessings that I have right now is to know that somewhere I uh, banked all those memories and those stories. So I wanted to go ahead and, like I said, talk about um, our values and some of our belief systems, but I wanted to go ahead and start out with um, 
our creation story of some of the stories that my father told me and how I interpreted. So um, I'm going to say um, Wakantanka, um, or the creator, as everybody's different words that we use for the higher power, God, or whatever, you know. Uh, we call him Wakantanka. And I always like to use the creator because none of us really know if it's a he or she. So for me, I always say creator. Um, Wakantanka to us, the Lakota way, the way that I have interpreted, is one, yet many. And um, But above all the all he is the great spirit. He is the one without an ancestor, my father said. Where did he come from? We don't know. They never talked about his parents, you know, or, you know, he started from the beginning and he will be the end. So that's the way I remember my father explaining to me that he is over all of us, whatever, but he is all, he is so many in one is what he always used to say. He's in everything. He um, and, and he said um, that no matter what, he said, we have all these stories. Um, and the way I, I would probably explain is um, just like the archangels um, and some of the belief systems that other people have, there's kind of like a hierarchy of, of deities. Uh, from the Wakantanka, but he's in all, I I mean, he's in everything, and even though that we say other deities, Tungashlas, we believe that he's in every one of them as well. But anyway, um, the first part of creation is uh, what Wakantanka made was Inya, the rock or the stone. That was the beginning. He was the first one that was made. And then there was Uchimaka, um, Mother Earth, as we call. And then there's Shka, or Shka Shka, is uh, what I interpreted was everything that moves. And that was the sky or the heavens. Uh, maybe he's talking about the universe. And then we, um, we call the sun. We is sun. So all of them had responsibilities in the order of the universe. And um, again, Ian was the ancestor of all things because he was the beginning. I mean, according to what my dad would would say, you know, in regards to our story, he he was the beginning. So he is our ancestor, Ian, because he's he's been here forever. And then Maka um, was the protector and the nurturer of households and families. Um, and as we look at it nowadays, we say, Ujimakam, Mother Earth, yes, she sustains us because she gives life to us through through all what she is made of. And that comes in again where as females, we get the gift from her to be life givers. But I will explain that in one of my stories in regards to motherhood. So anyway, um, and then there's we. We was responsible, uh, or he was a protector of, of bravery, the fortitude, uh, the compassion, everything. We was the one that, um, I guess in a way, brought sunshine to us to change to change our thought process in regards to saying, oh my goodness, it's a beautiful day, you know, but that was his responsibility. And so anyway, those were the four. And then again, I'm going to explain to you later on in regards to what numbers are so significant, number four, number seven, and number 16. Those are some of the things that are very significant in, in Lakota life. But I will explain as I go on to the counterparts of, of uh, the deities or the Tungashilas. I mean, like I said, I... From my understanding, there's a hierarchy, but yet again, Tungashula or Wakantanka is at all. So the counterpart, um, from what I call it, or maybe the partners or uh, the the worker of the 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 oh I don't know how would you say it um, 
uh, the supervisor. I mean, it's almost like the supervisor supervises these um, these other workers. So those I call counterparts. And so with the counterpart of Sun was Hanwi. And Hanwi is the moon. Um, and she was responsible or is responsible for time setting uh, throughout the night. I think, you know, for me, what my dad said was, while we're all asleep and she is the one that manages and organizes everything that happens for the next day. And I think that's a good way of putting it. She, she is responsible for emotions and for everything to get ready for, for, for the next day. And sometimes I look at my life and I think, God, that's, you know, that, that is amazing. You know, we really don't know, you know, what, what happens throughout the nighttime. So, Howie was um, supposedly, in one of our stories, was a wife of we. So, anyway, that that basically is what I remember. But, I mean, again, like I said, the storytelling uh, will come about, you know, later on through other shows. And then there was Tate, which is a win. Um was responsible for the seasons and Tate blows in uh, I mean again he said Tate just comes and blows in the the different weathers you know for all the seasons so that's the way I I can interpret uh, Tate's responsibilities and also he said Tate was responsible for for uh, our lives after death uh, because the wind carries our spirit up to the spirit world, and I really like that. I mean, I just I was just sitting there thinking about that. Is we really don't know, you know, what happens, but through our stories, you know, it kind of makes sense to know that after we die, there's energy, don't you think? Absolutely, makes... absolutely. There's lots of energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that. So I mean, you know, as I'm thinking about my stories and everything, is. I have to think that somewhere through generations, uh, some of these were were pretty much thought about, or it was brought to them. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the next one is Wopre, and Wopre, according to our stories, was a beautiful woman, and she was a wife of. Um, Oh God, I can't remember. I mean, I I know she was a wife of one of the deities, but she was responsible for the laws um, and the rules of the earth. She was a mediator. Uh, I mean, I guess I would explain it as a mediator. You know, she was the one that kept harmony. And Wopre, again, in our language, means law. So it's amazing how those stories come about, you know, to say, mm -hmm. well, she, she kind of pretty much set everything, uh, she set the standards, you know, for a way of life, but she also came in and um, provided, uh, or she was a mediator for anything that was happening throughout the universe. Mm -hmm. That as as far as I remember, because I was, I mean, one of the times that I remember is I said, oh, God, you know, I mean, it's, it's amazing to know, to know that uh, they had these creation stories, but yet every one of them was significant in regards to, to the rules and the organization mm -hmm. of creation. Mm -hmm. So he used to say, Daku, you washed it. I mean, Wopre was the one that Daku Kash. You washed it. She was the one that made everything good. You know, because if we, if we think about it, um, through through the rules and the guidance that we have, if we walk that, as we say, the walk road. Uh, I mean, the rock road. Um, the red road. If we walk that, then everything is good. Mm -hmm. So, in his way, he used to say, Daku Kash. You washed it. <laughs> So I like that. I mean, I, I, you know, as I was sitting there, I, I was thinking a lot about this, you know, just about, oh, God, you know, how am I going to explain and, and my interpretation? But you know what? Through prayers, the answer comes. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. Yeah. And then Wakia. Now, Wakia and Toy, this is pretty much what you're supposed to do. 
<laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Wakia's responsibility was cleaning up the disruption. Because, again, there's deities, again, as my dad used to say, Takukesh, Washten, and Takukesh, Shicha. There's good and bad and everything. And so Wakia's responsibility was cleaning up the disruption. And, and it's so amazing. I guess they, when they, somewhere from the beginning, when the ancestors pretty much uh, understood or or saw what was happening in creation, they pretty they pretty much thought about Wakia. And Wakia was responsible for for the weather. And as you can see, uh, sometimes, you know, um, Wakia comes in with a loud, booming voice mm -hmm. <laughs> and the <a> lightning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so there is, there is some some symbology in everything. Truly. And I would say that, you know, when you think about it, there's life forces we don't understand, and cyclones, tornadoes, the wind, you know, the wabaniomani, the whirlwinds. I mean, they all do clean up, don't you think? <laughs> they really do clean up. <laughs> Even in our own lives, the chaos. The chaos that we have, you know, boy, man, we're just like woman you these, you know, we're, we're so <laughs> unorganized, you know, we run around, and then all of a sudden, you know, we find that calmness. Once right. we find that calmness and that peace, then the answer comes. Right. Well, I remember That's a long time I'm... ago when Wakian told me after the spirits gave me my name, Wakianto. He said to me, remember that you're like those the Thunder Nation in that uh, you reflect to people what it is that they need to see within themselves and that causes destruction within them. So that just as you say, that so that the healing can occur and the calm can come back. Yes, exactly. And that's what my that's what my dad, well, my mom used to say that too. And, you know, I talk a lot about my dad, but, you know, my mother had a lot, a, a lot to offer too, but, uh, through, through some of the analogies of life and everything else. But it seems to me that my dad had the gift of, of wisdom to bring these stories to me. And I'm so glad that I listened, even though at times I didn't want to listen. But anyway, I think time is running short, but I would probably say right now, after speaking about these uh, responsibilities, um, the significant of the numbers, why we use 4, 7, and 16, and I'm not really sure if a lot of people are aware of this, you know, but number 4 is really meaningful because everything is almost in 4s. The four directions, north, south, east, west, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the seasons. Uh, you think about that, winter, spring, summer, and fall. Right. Um, and then even um, through through the, the, the buffalo, uh, the symbology of, of the animals and all the directions, I mean, they're categorized in four pieces of the medicine wheel. Mm -hmm. And I don't really quite understand because I'm not really into that astrology, the Indian astrology part of it. But when people talk about spirit animals, um, see, I don't know this, but I don't know if they pick up if they pick up from from what what month they are born or if the spirit animal comes to them. I don't know that, but for sure, uh, I know being born under the sign or of Leo, uh, in Indian, I'm a salmon, and I have no, no uh, interest in fish, ah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm not really sure, um, but if you think about the makeup of man, our uh, intuitive uh, ways of um, the medicine wheel, or I guess what, what symbolizes us through the medicine wheel is we have to take care for components of our lives. And that's, you know, again, I say the emotional, the mental, the physical, and the spiritual to have a well-balanced life and to have a Tony Wash Day money. 
is the good life. Mm-hmm. So number four, and probably there's other meanings to number four, but that that number always comes up, you know, as to why we believe in four, you know, the four number. I mean, the number four, I should say. And number seven is probably not really used, but my dad used to say, number seven, uh, there's seven things that you do when you pray, is that you pray to the heavens above, to the ground, below, and the four directions, and yourself, you're in the middle. So that's number seven, and a lot of people don't really realize it. You know, Mm -hmm. I think we have forgotten some of our ways. Mm -hmm. So number seven comes within ourselves, I think, you know, just, you know, knowing when we say our prayers. Right. And number 16, this is, there's so many different things that that symbolizes number 16, why everything is done in 16. The only thing that I can remember is is to know that uh, somewhere along the line, my dad said, all the deities, I mean, again, the hierarchy of the responsibilities, although Tungashula uh, is, is in many forms, or Wakantanka is in many forms, there's 16 responsibilities, or I should say deities, that are responsible. Um, so that number 16 is kind of used in regards to how many kipi poles that are used. Mm-hmm. Because that sustains, I mean, they... The, the 16 Tungashulas pretty much are, are within the teepee to keep, to keep that uh, family grounded. I right. mean, that's my way of thinking. Mm-hmm. I like that. And then, yeah, and also the inipi, the sweat lodges. You're supposed to use 16 because, again, I, I believe that's the same concept. When you go in there to pray, all these Tungashulas are going to be there. 16 Tungashlas. Yes, and there are 16 in my NEP. Yeah. You're right. So, basically, that's, you know, the, some of the things that I I remember. And again, number four um, is, is from what I know, and from what I interpret as I'm thinking about it, the four groups are, you know, uh, you have the superior part of, of Wakantanka, and I can't remember uh, in regards to to uh, seeing him as the great spirit and the controller. I would I hate I don't like using that word controller, but he makes everything happen. Mm-hmm. And then he has other two. I mean, you know, there's a, two that I remember, and I can't remember what my dad said. You know about that. Mm-hmm. But uh, the subordinates, and then again, when I had talked about the four subordinates, yeah. Um, and we so there there comes number four again right and and I guess those are just some of the things and then you have this uh, below again there are some subordinates I um, or workers I guess of these uh, four other I mean there's a, you know like I said hierarchy is from what I understand and then the least uh, the four is the ones that, um, <laughs> I mean, again, the good and bad of everything. The four is the contention of the challenges that we have in life. And they uh, call them, their tunkashlas, or we have the deities that, that kind of ca- cause havoc in our lives. And and one of them was <laughs> Ia. Ia was the chief of evil, is what he used to say. He was the one that stood first. Ia in our language means he spreads gossip. <laughs> oh. Yeah, or, or like the cyclone, um, the tornado, he caused havoc, you know? Uh-huh. And then we have Iktomi, the trickster. Mm-hmm. Now, the way I think about that, um, I mean, like I said, and I'll probably go ahead um, and say say that uh, the ikdomi is ego in my in my um, in my interpretation as I think about it and everything. 
that he tricks us all. I mean, whether if we have the gift of intuition within ourselves to know better, you know, to make the choices. Right. Iktomi is the one that pressures us. Oh, no, 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 you got to do this. And boy, he is so great in our stories. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so many Iktomi stories, you know, uh-huh. because sometimes through Iktomi stories, they're telling or we're, we're telling about ourselves. Exactly. I love it, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. And then there's Wazia. Wazia, as we call him, the uh, Wazia is the man, the old man from the north. Uh-huh. Sometimes he causes havoc, although, you know, there's good and bad everything. He brings the coal. He's cold-heartedness and no compassion. Uh-huh. And that's why we have, I mean, we call him Wazia because the wind comes from the north a lot of times. Sometimes it's cold. But I, I mean, you know, I think about these every time I sit there and I'm beating, you uh-huh. know, just different stories, you know, that come up. Right. Linda Grizak is in your chat room, Del Marie. Excuse me? Linda Grizak is in the chat room. And, oh, uh, hi, Linda. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's like, cool. All right. <laughs> and then there's um, Wakayanka is, is one of the ones, too, is she she stood for beauty she was the most beautiful woman and oh everybody envied her and 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 because she was beautiful envy comes about you envy because of her beauty and that's what i think about you know but there's also she brings jealousy because you envy somebody and and so those are just some of the things that i think about is they have these stories because of, of some of the uh, the legends or whatever you call them is they do come through us in regards to our emotions and then and then we have we have uh, uh, one um, anu, uh, anung ite, anung ite, which means two face mm-hmm. so we have the story of anung ite, and that one is the two faced person and then through us because we can turn ourselves to good and bad or we can be trusted or we cannot be trusted. Exactly. So those are just some of the things that I I thought about in regards to some of the things that are our daily challenges in life, you know, in regards to some of these stories. Mm-hmm. But there's always good and bad and and I guess I should say that concept is in our everyday life, with, even within ourselves. We can probably focus on the good, and there's also stories about which one do you, I mean, there's a story about a grandpa, you know, talking to the, uh, to the boy about which one is good, well, it's the one that you feed. And those are some of the challenges that we have every day in regards to, to staying in the light, being good, or, you know, again, uh, Iktomi comes and pressures us, you know, to to not do good things. Mm-hmm. Those are the choices that we have. So I think these stories, uh, you know, were passed down from generation to, to, to generation, but it plays a big part in our daily lives, you know, as, as Lakota people, the way it was, that's how they kept you know the the group, the bands. You know, in regards to to living a harmonious life. Right. Um, somebody was pretty much, you know, I guess the the wise person. I mean, again, at one time, you know, um, I think I had talked about the wisest person was usually the one that was kind of made the the chief. You know, because he he pretty much understood. You know, he had to have the knowledge of the universe. He had to have the knowledge of all these emotions that we carry. Right. So, anyway, that I think we are we running out of time here. That was pretty good, and I was just so excited <laughs> because boy, I woke up at four thirty this morning, and through my through my through um, through 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 Hongwei, I was able to get organized. <laughs> Well, it's, it's been a great show this morning, Del. Thank you for sharing the stories as they were giving, given to you and as you remember them. This is the way yeah. that we all learn so much. Uh, I know. And then, like I said, I wanted to go ahead and explain about creation, all these 
deities or Tugashilas that play a part in our daily lives. And then and then the next coming shows, I will probably talk about each one of the virtues, you know, in regards to how that plays throughout with our with our creation stories. But I was excited about that, too, just because, you know, oh, my God, you know, there's so many people that don't know some of these. Mm-hmm. And I kind of forgot a lot about it, you know. But, but again, I was able to go ahead, and this morning I woke up and said, oh, my God, I just remembered all this. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So... Thank you, listeners, and you all have a good day. Don't let the Kitomi um, poke you. <laughs> have a beautiful day, <laughs> Chue. All right, thank you. Uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.